In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to automate the creation and validation of SAP Business Partners. There will be four automated test cases, two API and two UI-based automated test cases. The first test case is to fetch a token from the SAP API, and then we will pass that into the header of the second test case to create a business partner. The response of the second test case will return the business partner number. We will then use that business partner number as the input for test case three and four to go and look up that newly created business partner in the SAP Fiori web-based interface and then the SAP WinGUI interface. We will also verify the name and address match what was in the request for test case two. Now let's switch to Tosca and start to begin the creation of our automated test cases. I am now in Tosca and I have the Tosca API scanner open. Here you can see I've got a test case to fetch the token from the SAP uh, cloud instance and we are going to fetch the token here. In order to run the token request we need to populate the auth tab with auth authentication equals to basic and then your username and password and select pre-authenticate. So now let's run it and now you can see the response has been returned and here is where the token value exists. I have a token here so I will grab this and then we'll go to the post and in the request we will add it here and then we can run and the response that comes back here you can see I've got a newly generated business partner inside of SAP using the SAP API OData service. The next step in our process is to export these two API test cases to Tosca. This will enable us to parameterize and data drive the request and responses. We will use the values from the request and responses as inputs and validation steps in our Fiori and WinGUI automated test cases to verify the business partner was indeed created successfully. Switching to Tosca, let's see what was created for us. The API scan generates the modules and the test cases for us, so let's take a look. For an API test case in Tosca, it will have two modules, one for the request and one for the response. It will also create a blank automated test case. Our task is to populate the modules with the correct attributes so that the test case can function as expected. For the token request we can see that the fetch attribute has been added to the header so we don't have to do anything for the token request and the token response what we want to do is buffer the name uh, value of the token so I can click on uh, the value and then I'll buffer the module attribute. You can see that it adds the module attribute underneath the module and now it's highlighted. For the create or post business partner request what we will want to also do is add the attribute for the token so we can pass in that value and then we'll also want to grab the entire payload. I can just highlight the whole thing and click on add and now you can see I've got a list of all the module attributes that are that correspond to the, the JSON payload here. So as you see, as I click on each one of them, it highlights the corresponding JSON attribute. Okay, so that's for the request. For the response, what we will want to buffer is the business partner number. So the business partner number is located here. So we'll highlight it and we'll click on add. Anytime we make any changes to any of our modules, the test cases that were generated from those modules will also get automatically updated. This, in turn, lowers the cost of maintenance. So if we take a look at our fetch token test case, we can see that it now has an attribute to capture the token. So what we want to do is create a variable or buffer, this token value, and we will select action mode of buffer. So when this test case runs, the token value will be stored in this variable 
so that we can then pass it on to our next test case. Now let's see this in action. We can execute our fetch token test case to verify that we are actually getting a token back from the SAP API. We can select Run in Scratchbook from the ribbon, or we can select Run in Scratchbook from the context menu. What happens next is Tosca will minimize itself, and because there's an, this is an API test case, you will not see anything, but then the results come back. You see the status bar at the bottom turn green, indicating that the test case passed. The Scratchbook results allow us to take a look at what was actually captured or buffered from the response. So here you can see that the buffer name value has been set to this token value. Now let's take a look at the post business partner test case. Here you can see that the attributes have also been added to the test step. So there's two test steps, one for the request, one for the response. So since we added those values from the module, now they also appear in the test step level. So now the next step in my process, I want to populate this with some data, and I've got two choices that I can do so from. So I can select Auto Fill Values button, and it will populate all the attributes with the values from the module from when we imported it. But because the token value is out of uh, sync or is invalid, I will need to change this value to the buffer value. So let me type in the buffer syntax. And when I click enter, it will resolve itself. The other option I have to populate my test step is that I can actually autofill the values through the clipboard. So if I have a JSON payload here, I can copy it. And then from the test step, I can say autofill values from the clipboard. Here you can see the attribute values were updated based on the values from the JSON file. But it did not remove my buffer value. Now let's take a look at the partner response. And I want to verify that I got this value back and also buffer this value so that I can also use that in a subsequent automated test step or test case. So in here, I will then again put the, I will use um, the syntax for verify and buffer. And then I will type in the variable name, business partner number, click on enter and it will resolve itself and then automatically set the action mode to verify. So what I want to do next is actually create a new automated test case and add both of those test cases to create one test case that will first execute the fetch token test case and then execute the post business partner test case. So I've created a new test case. Let's give it a new name. We'll create and verify the business partner. And now I will add this one, the fetch to this test case, and then the post. Now if I take a look at the newly formed test case, I have my the fetch automated test case, and then I have the post automated test case. And the response is capturing the token and then passing it to the post of the business partner request. Now let's run and see if we can actually create a business partner. So I'll click on run and again Tosca will minimize itself and then we should see the status bar down at the bottom turn green. We do, so now let's take a quick look at the results in our scratch book. And here we will navigate to the business partner and here we will see that we have a newly business partner created in the SAP instance. Now let's take a look at a completed example. Here we have an SAP Fiori test case. The first step in the process we will log into SAP. It will select the Manage Business Partner Master Data tile. Then it will look up the business partner. So we are going to pass in the business partner number that we captured from the API response. We will pass that into this test step and search for it. 
We will then select the business partner from the table view and then verify the information. Matches what we use to create the business partner via the API request. The next test case will also verify the business partner was created and we can validate it through the SAP Win GUI screens. So if we take a look at this additional completed example for this test case, we will log in to the Win GUI SAP instance. We will navigate to the business partner screen. We will then pass in again the business partner number that was buffered in the API response. We will search for it. Once the results come back, we will verify it in the search window of the Win GUI business partner screens and we will verify that the business partner number matches what we got back in the API response. Now let's put all this together in an end-to-end -end execution list. So I've navigated to the execution tab. I've already created an execution list. And I've added the three automated test cases that we have created and viewed. Now let's execute them. Tosco will begin to execute the API test case and then it will log into SAP Fiori. Input the business partner number, click go. Select the row that comes back and verify it. Now it will launch the SAP WinGUI screen and log in and then also verify that the business partner has been uh, created and can be verified and validated inside the SAP WinGUI application. Now let's take a look at the results and you can see that all three of our test cases have passed and the business partner has been verified and validated in each of the SAP UI systems, SAP Fiori and SAP WinGUI. In summary, we created two API test cases, one to create an SAP API test case to request a token. We buffered the token value and passed it into the Create Business Partner API test case. The response of that API was the business partner number. Then we saw how we could pass that business partner number into test case three and four that then verified the business partner number, name and address matched inside of the SAP Fiori and SAP WinGUI screens.